Welcome to 40 TV with your host 40. Today we're going to create a starburst uh, inside of Photoshop graphic, if you will. Right now I currently have a, our achieved result opened up inside of Adobe Photoshop CS6, which is what I'm using for the tutorial. However, um, most versions of uh, Adobe Photoshop CS should be able to achieve the same result. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this document so we can start from scratch. The first thing we want to do is create a new document. We can do that by clicking on File and selecting New. This is going to be a pattern, so we want to make it 20 pixels by 20 pixels. The resolution doesn't matter because this is going to be a pattern. I want to zoom in, so I'm going to go ahead and press Command Equals or Plus to enlarge this uh, square of ours. We need our rulers set up so we can drag a guide in. To show our rulers, you can press Command R on your keyboard. Once they're shown, I want to go ahead and drag a vertical line from the left part of the rulers out. All I have to do is click with my left mouse button and drag. It should snap to the center of this square. If it's not snapping, you can go up to View and make sure Snap To, and there's a check next to Guides. Once I have the guide snap to the center of this uh, square, I want to select my marquee tool, the rectangular one, and click and drag and create a marquee around half of my square. Make sure that you have the two colors selected for your starburst. I currently have green and black selected. It doesn't matter which uh, color is going on which side. Um, in order to fill my current selection with our, my foreground color, I can go ahead and press Option Delete on my keyboard. To inverse my selection, to make sure that the white portion is selected, I can go up to the Select in the menu and select Inverse. I can switch my foreground and background colors by pressing X on my keyboard or clicking this little button right here. Now I can press Option Delete to fill uh, the current selection with my foreground color, which is green. By pressing Command D on my keyboard, it will deselect uh, my current selection. Now I want to make this a pattern. To do so I need to go up to the edit menu and say define pattern. I'm going to leave it uh, at the default name of pattern 2 and click OK. After doing so we can go ahead and close this document by pressing X. I don't need to save this because the pattern file is um, independent of the document. It's uh, part of Photoshop now. I want to create a new document by going to file, selecting new, I'm going to use a width of 1000 and a height of 1000 pixels. My resolution is going to be 72 uh, DPI, but that's because I'm going to have web output or web delivery for this particular image. If you're planning to print this, then you would uh, make sure that your resolution was set to your printer specs, most commonly probably 300 DPI. I'll go ahead and click on OK. Now I want to fill my blank document in with that pattern that we created. So I'm going to go over to the Paint Bucket tool located here on the left. If you do not see it, you go ahead and click uh, down on the Gradient tool, click and hold your mouse, and it should reveal the Paint Bucket tool. I'll go ahead and make sure that it's set, the fill mode is set to Pattern instead of Foreground. By default, I believe it's Foreground. Once I switch over to Pattern, I'll make sure that I have the pattern selected that we just created. I'll click on my blank document, and it will fill with the pattern that we created. Now all I need to do is go up to uh, Filter, go to Distort, and Polar Coordinates. You want to make sure Rectangular to Polar is selected, and click OK. And now we have a perfect starburst. To make this a little bit more interesting, we can add to it. Uh, maybe to give it a little bit more of a 3D look. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this background. To do so, I can double click on the layer. It's going to give me the option to rename the layer. I'm just going to go ahead and select OK. I'm going to press Command J on my keyboard to duplicate this layer as a copy. This layered copy, now that it's selected layer 0 copy, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have my move um, tool selected. I can get to it by pressing V or clicking on the button up here. I'm going to hold Shift and the right arrow on my uh, keyboard to move uh, my layer over 5 pixels to the right. I'm going to press shift and press up on my keyboard to move that layer five pixels up. When I do so, I want to zoom out of my document by pressing command minus. Then I'm going to press command T to transform that new layer. That brings up the transform dialog box. When I bring my mouse to one of these uh, squares in the middle, it will let me drag um, 
or transform that in that particular position. What I'm looking for is a arrow that points to the left uh, or to the right and to down, which this is a rotation handle. I'm going to go ahead and press shift to constrain my motion and I'm going to click and drag to rotate this 45 degrees. You can see in the tooltip above where my mouse is that it says it's now being rotated 45 degrees. I'm going to let go of the mouse, I'm going to let go of shift, and I'm going to go ahead and press enter on my keyboard. When I do that you'll notice that this does not now, this current transform does not cover the totality of my document. So in order to do that I'm going to go ahead and press command T to bring up the transform again on the keyboard, or I mean on the document. I'm going to come up here and instead of grabbing a rotation handle, I'm going to come down until it sits over this corner uh, transform uh, portion of the box. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard to constrain um, the motions and I'm going to hold option to constrain from the center point. So holding shift, option, and left clicking, I'm going to drag this point outward until this now covers the totality of my document. I'm going to press return on my keyboard to commit the action and then I'm going to go ahead and play with the transform uh, the blend modes. Right now it's set to normal but if I change this over to hard light you'll notice that we have this brings an interesting effect, right? If we switch it over to soft light an interesting effect. If I zoom in by pressing command and plus or command equal we'll see that now we have a little bit more of a 3D look. I can even play with the opacity of the top layer if I want. Um, so yeah, you can keep doing this. You can copy both these layers, repeat what I did with this layer zero copy, and keep coming up with really cool, interesting results. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, please rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for uh, listening to another one of our tutorials here at 40TV. Again, your host, 40, uh, checking out. Have a good one, guys.